Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video we're continuing off from where we left off with the building system. So essentially last time we still left off with a little bit of issues. One thing that I did notice was that the building in here, whenever we set these to both can build and finalizing the building and stuff like that, um, we should probably be buffering last to true, uh, or at least uh, the set can build state. And that probably also means we also need to buffer last this one just to override the set can build buffer. Uh, essentially the reason for this was because when a player joined in while you were building it didn't actually get the building material it never changed it had like the, the actual original material which of course we don't want um, so i think this should automatically have solved that and that's a good start so now let's just go and quickly test that that works just to confirm so i start up here I grab this take it up equip it and i drag it out here and then i go on to my other screen and i have my other client join and we actually have an error here item 17 okay let's see what's happening item 17 so the inventory is holding item why is that an issue it's having a null reference here i guess what we can do is we can have if play inventory exists and it's holding an item try that that's a new issue let's have a look now let me try it again we start up grab this we go we equip it put it there and now let me go into the other screen join in and there we go we joined in and as you will be able to see here let me try and drag the client over whoops there we go you can see now it's actually the correct ghost material here that we have on the host and now that we finalized it here it is in its finalized form if we stop we hit play again should see it back in its finalized form and this one not in. okay cool so that seems to work now let's continue on one of the other things that we wanted to do was add some collision detections let me first of all close a bunch of these just so we don't have so much clutter um let's do some actual collision detections we can actually check if you know are we colliding with something and there's multiple ways of going about it um there's definitely some setups that can be bigger and cleaner i don't want to go too elaborate with this uh because you know I'm, I'm really only here to show kind of the the basics of, of setting something like this up and i feel like this already achieves it pretty well um, but something that we can quickly do uh, is we can set up some collisions on a sort of per building basis that we can quickly check so what we can do is we can do a private pool is colliding you know to check whether we're colliding with something uh, and essentially what i want to try and do here is probably just let's try and do it with a box i think a box or a sphere or something like that can be good um, it's up to you how you want to do it but let's try and do something like physics dot overlap uh, box uh, and we can actually use the non-allocation version just to have it a bit more efficient and um, that should work fine uh, and then maybe we can on the building actually set the layer mask let's do a let's just make it public that's easier let's make public layer mask uh, build colliding layer and we can also make a public vector 3 and this will be the uh, build colliding extent, something like that. And let's just set this equal to vector 3.1. And then let's also make a gizmo drawing. So let's make a on draw gizmo selected in here. And then we can do gizmos.color. Let's just do something like yellow. I think yellow is a good color for building. And then we can do a wire cube with the transform position with the build collision extents. So now that we have this, we're able to essentially draw the collision that we will be checking for. And then in here is where we'll be doing the actual checking. So first of all, let's make a private static. Uh, and this will just be a, uh, I think it's a collider array. All right. And with the collider array, we of course have to define what the size of the collider array is. I think we can just do something like new collider array of, of a size 10. Uh, and now in here, we of course have to have it return something. So this will be amount of hits. And then in here, we essentially have to say, where is it? Where's the size of it? And give it the collision array and the layer mask. And oops, I just realized this is an overlap capsule. That's not what we want. Uh, overlap box, non-allocation, there we go. Uh, and this should be at the current building dot transform dot position. And this should be the half extents, which means we should do the current building dot build collider extent divided by two. Uh, and then we do the collider layer and then let's also do the current building dot uh building collider layer like that i think that is it do we put the layer in front no what is angry about layer mask to quaternion uh let's just try and do a quaternion dot identity no, actually let's just do the rotation current building dot transform dot rotation does that work yeah that works okay well it's turned into quite a long setup here but hopefully it makes sense essentially what we're doing now is we're getting all the hits so what we can do now is we can for loop through all of the hits so for every one of the hits then we can also do a bar to check the hits and that's that will be in our collider array so now we're not allocating uh, anything new here um, and then we can check so the hit is the collider that we've now hit 
Um, and I guess essentially, let me just check. Let me just think, because essentially if we have hit something that is even on our collision layer. So I guess technically what we could just do is we could just return if hits is greater than zero. That would technically work. That means if we've hit something, then we can't build. Uh, so let's just do this. So if is colliding, we'll just set the can build equals to false. And of course here we also have to return. This means that if you hit something, we return and we can't build. Let's go and test that now. We've got to set all of this up on the building. So let's enter into the building here. Let's turn on the gizmos. Now you can see we have this yellow square down here. I can just, you can do whatever you want with it. Um, but this, oh yeah, this is because they're offset. I guess we can also do a collision offset actually on the building. That that might be nice to have regardless. Let's do public vector three. Uh, yeah, build colliding offset like so. And then out here, we can do it to the position plus the current building dot build colliding offset. So there it goes. Now we can control the offset of the collision detection, which allows you a little bit more freedom. Again, you can also make this a sphere. You can make multiple colliders and stuff like that. I'm just trying to kind of show you a simple version of it here. Why does this not move? Oh, that's because we didn't apply it to the gizmos. Uh, so going back to the building here, we just got to apply that offset as well. Uh, build colliding offset here. So there we go. Now we can offset the collision check as well. So for example, I don't think it's a bad idea having a little above the ground in case it might want to check collisions versus the ground. We can also make it a little bit taller. Like so. Again, let's put it a little bit up. 7.2, maybe 7.4, something like that. I guess let's try that. Uh, the build colliding layer, I don't actually want it to be default. That means it can hit everything. But for example, I don't want it to hit resources. I don't want it to hit players. Um, I don't want to hit items or interactables. Uh, let's try something like that and see how this works out. So now we're gonna go play, I'm gonna go pick up our item, take it in, drag and drop it. And you can see now when we hit a tree, we can no longer build, uh, but now it's stuck though, which is interesting. See when we make a new one and the second that it gets stuck, it no longer moves with us until we make a new one again. We also gotta fix this whole creating a new one every time, or at least we need to remove it again. Um, but let's try and figure out why does it just stop. Uh, sets can build to false and then it just returns. I'm not sure if, fully see it the build position should still update ray casting should still work i mean i guess we can check how far we get so i guess let's try and say debug.log1 i always like just going like this and two so we can essentially see do we even get to here i mean i suspect that we don't but why wouldn't we i guess i can also draw zero just for good measure let's try and see how far we get oh going in here i'll pick this up equip it Okay, so zero, one, two, and then the second we hit it, it, it does get zero, one, but that's expected then. Oh, that's because we set the position down here. I'm a goofy goober. There we go. That needs to be gone. That, I I bet a lot of you were probably screaming at me with that one. Well, that's programming for you. Quick debugging. Here we go. Now it should work. So now we equip this, boom, equip it, and there we go. now it goes red and blue, depending on if it hits something or not. So you can, so you can see now we got a little collision going. I don't know what it just hit there maybe it hit ourselves oh that's a fun oh a little movement tech i like that we'll, we'll keep that in um, but i can see when it hits things that it doesn't like to hit then it'll scream at us like so and you could also you know check with the ground and whatnot but i think this is an, an easy way of doing it and we can of course put it down now let's get rid of this excess ghost that's here so i guess let's try um and just get rid of that whenever we unequip it. So let's try and go back to the item actually and figure out is there a like on unequip? I guess it just despawns, right? Isn't that how we do it? Let's let me check play inventory. And what it does is unequip item, item in hand null. Yeah, it destroys it. So we can just quickly call something on unequip, something like that. And we can plop, plop this into the item itself. So let's do, let's do, let's do it down here somewhere. Let's do here, public virtual void on unequip item. And then in the building, we just override that. What we also try and do, oh, sorry, in the buildable, what I meant. We can just do it here on unequip item. All I do is just, if we have a current building, we just destroy that current building. 
So we're gonna go equip this, we're gonna drag and drop it down, equip it, take it off, and there we go. So now it disappears again. Alright, cool. And now we can also just make it uh, so that it eats up on itself. You know, it actually uses itself up. I think that's a good idea too. Um, so now let me try and figure out how we did it with the consumables. I don't remember uh, how we set that up. Consumable. Didn't we set up something called the consumable? Uh, it's inheriting from item. Oh, we just called it a food, I see. So it just adds hunger, consumes the item. Okay, so it's just part of the... Consuming so it does item that consume item was instance handle inventory manager. Okay, so I guess we can do well, I guess we can just do the same thing right whenever we build. I guess that should work. So let's go to the buildable. And then whenever that we actually build it, which I forgot is here. We can just give it this, I think. I think that should do the same thing. Should count it down now. So now let's try and go into the scene. Let's try and grab the buildable. Oh, it's very offset from its graphics, I just noticed. Or from its center. Just drag that. Okay, cool. Now let's place a couple of these around. Like that. And go hit play. Now let me try and pick like three of them up. Equip them and place down, place down, and place down. And there we go. Now we've consumed them. You can see the unequipped work. Now we no longer have it in the hand. It has collision detection as well. As you can see, they're fine with colliding with each other. But that's because they're just on the default layer. I guess what we could also do um, is we could give the test build object here. We could give it a building layer. And let me go on to the building here. Give it the building layer. Yes, change children. Um, and then on to this as well. We can say that we don't want to interact with other buildings. And also on the build layers here. I think that's fine, actually. Let's go and test this now. So now we pick up three of these, we equip it, boom, and now you can see now we can't build inside other buildings either. Cool, so that seems like it works really well. Let me go and test with the other player as well, just so we can see how that works. So we can see this guy standing with this here. I'll equip this, go in here, we pick up the other two. We can see his ghost there. We can take our own. And as you can see, we can't collide with his building either. We can build it inside of here. And now when he goes over here, oh, you can see it. Oh, I guess if we take it outside and then inside. Oh, now we can't collide at all. We can still put it, I guess something... Oh, huh, I wonder what's happening here. I wonder if they are running. I think they're running logic on each other. Uh, I think that's what's happening here. I think this logic in here is running for both, um, is my guess. So I think if we go onto the buildable and we do all of this, we'll just do if it's not the owner, we'll return. So we don't want that to happen. We also don't want this to happen if we're not the owner. And we also don't want this to happen with another owner. Let me just go and test this theory. All right, so I finally found the issue. It's because we're overloading essentially the RPCs because we're, you know, RPCs are, uh, you know, send on tick and we're essentially sending it on update or trying to send RPCs on update. So in order to not do that, as you can see, we have the update in hand thing here, which is what we're using. And that's obviously an update method. Uh, we can either take it ourselves, um, which might not be a bad idea. No, I think it's cleaner if the player inventory does it. So let me do that in the player inventory. So let's first of all open up the awake. Oh, not awake, sorry. Because we're in a network behavior. So let's just do it in unspawned, I guess is fine. And then let's do, if we are the owner, we'll do a network manager dot on tick. On owner tick, like this. And then on despawn, of course, we'll unsubscribe from this. Like so. And then let's make the on owner tick. And then we can do if item in hand, we'll do on call item in hand dot oh, uh, owner tick in hand, something like that. And then we can put that in here, make it a virtual. So that's in the item, of course. We have a virtual void in here, which is just the owner tick in hand. And now we can go to our buildable finally. And then instead of owner in hand, we'll do owner tick in hand. So now we're only doing it on tick, which shouldn't be overloading the system. So now let me try and press play. And we'll also get the client in here. Perfect, let me pick these up. So he picks up two, boom, there we go. He's drawing now. And now let's take this. Now it is a bit jittery um, because it's obviously now only drawing on tick. But as we should be able to see now, now it actually happens. It works fine. The check doesn't overload and the checks work correctly. 
Um, so I guess we can handle this in multiple ways though, because I think we want to draw the ghost constantly, but we don't want to check the collisions. What we can do then is we have the draw ghost on one and we have the check collisions on another. So let's do that. Sorry for this little need for a rewrite, rewrite, um, but uh, so let's do keep the update in hand here. And then we will draw the ghost in here if we are the owner, like so. We don't technically need the owner check here because this is the owner taking hand. And then here we check in collisions. We essentially do the check if we are colliding. Can build is false. Um, and I think can build should only be modified ever in the check collisions. So what we can do is we can set this to false here. We can set this to true up here. We still want to check the hit. Let's have a, an extra bool. I know this might get a little bit confusing, but it's not that bad. Let's do a private bool was last hit like so. And then down here, this will just be true. And up here, this will be false like so. And this now means what we'll do is uh, if was last, if was last not a hit, then we set it to false and we return. So there it goes. Now we check if we've hit the ray cast. If we have not, it's false. Uh, we said can build to false. If we're colliding with something, we say can build to false. Otherwise, we said can build to true. So now can build shouldn't be modified at all down here where we draw the ghost, which means that should be completely smooth. But the actual checking of collisions and changing the can build and the visuals and stuff like that should only be on tick. So I know this might be a little bit confusing, but this is really just, I think it's pretty clean. So we're sort of keeping the functionality on tick and then we're just keeping the visuals um, not on tick. So let's try that. So the client, I'm just setting it up over there. Host over here. So now it should be smooth locally, as you can see, it's perfectly smooth here. And there we go. As you can see, you can now drag it around, draw it as well. You can see the collisions work as intended when we hit something. And yeah, that seems to work pretty well. And now when we can place it as well, that works fine. You can place it. And there we go. Now he's used them up. And the host here can also place them. Boop and boop. And now we've used them up. Cool. So now you have a little building system. Well, I really hope you like these videos. I'm sorry about this last bit being a little bit confusing. As I've said many times before, I'm also doing all of this on the fly. So it's also a bit of learning for me. And you can kind of go through the process and see how I set these things up myself. I really hope you enjoyed. I hope that you keep living the dream. Please do remember to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And I just hope that you have a wonderful day.